Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? So we are continuing on with our bailing. I've only got four passes left in this field. The combine is going quite nicely up in the top field. The pallets down there, we've got another pallet of wood that is almost ready. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to finish bailing this field. We are going to take that trailer over there with the one pallet of timber on it. And we're going to take that over to the wood chip sell point so that we can see how much we get for selling the wood chips or selling the timber as wood chips um, because in the standard game if you don't have any other mods installed that's the only thing you can do with the pallets of um, timber however they can be used in all sorts of other mods and the the, um, the mod company or I think it's LS mods or something like that um, that did the sawmill I'm not quite sure but apparently there's quite a few different things that you can do um, the factory script has been used in a number of different ways and you've got various different ones you can like take timber to manufacture pallets um, one of the things I'm, I'm pretty sure what you can do is you use this one to manufacture lumber you then take the lumber over to a pallet maker and he makes pallets and then you deliver the pallets to all sorts of different ones like the sugar beet factory and then you use you um, deliver sugar beet as well as the the pallets and you've also got to deliver water as well because uh, a lot of water is used in the process of turning the sugar beet into actual um, granulated sugar um, and then you get pallets of sugar coming out of that at the end and you also get cell points to go with it and that's just like one example and there's some maps that really have loads of these factory things set up all over the place but i don't think there's very many of them available on the mod hub uh, rattlesnake valley does have a couple of different bits i don't know if rattlesnake valley has got an actual pallet maker it does have a sugar beet factory so you can put in a sugar beet you can put in water um i don't think you have to worry about doing anything to do with pallets though so yeah there's um there's all sorts of different things that you can do with it and rattlesnake valley is something i'll be doing in the time lap very soon so we're not going to worry about that um as one of the options we're moving maps aren't we so i need your suggestions your input on what map we go to next so that i've got five maps that i can put up for a vote next week one of them is going to be gural and quite likely one of them is going to be the new spanish style map that is also available um as for the rest of them i really don't know yet um possibly drummond farm which is a um uh irish set one um however like i said i'm not certain yet i haven't made sort of any commitments or anything like that we will just literally have to wait and see so that is that field done um my question for this week is what animals would you like me to get um for the rest of the the um the series on this map um when i've got some spare money i will buy either sheep or i will buy more cows and we'll just keep sort of adding numbers to them until we're done or i can do it evenly between the two you know get 10 sheep and 10 cows at the same time um well you actually you've got to go twice you can't put the animals into the same uh trailer but anyway you get the idea so um it's your vote it's your game head in the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner so we're going to drive this one over here i don't think we actually need to worry about sticking this one onto the um machinery carrier there the um the gold hofer because it's got a 32 mile an hour road speed so when we need to we can drive it straight up to the top but for now we want to stick it out the way somewhere uh let's go over here and dump it into the fertilizer shed for now and then we can get that trailer moving i want to get that trailer over to the sawmill let's just park that one up in there you know what actually let's back this one in so that we can see it from front because i really like this machine and i want to be able to admire it every time i walk past it and there's the grain tank full so i will go up and i will deal with that and then we can continue onwards right let's put that one down there switch it off beautiful absolutely beautiful i am really pleased with that machine that is absolutely fantastic obviously i have included a link as to where i got it from in the description however if you find that i have not included the correct original link uh please make sure you let me know and give me um let me know where the original link is so that i can put the correct one in there i do not want to be giving you links to any kind of pirate sites or anything like that 
Uh, yeah, so let me get up to the top and deal with that. And I'm going to have to bring the Tatra back down here, aren't I? Because I need it to tow that one. Um, I don't have a dolly here available, do I? I don't think I do. Yeah, I'm going to need the I'm going to need that Tatra back down here. Right. Anyway, I'll see you in a minute. I am leaving those two trailers right there so that we can just manually move the combine to the trailers whenever it needs emptying. And I'm running off with the Phoenix. Um, I will go and get that trailer, the autoload trailer with that single pallet on, and we'll take it up to the sawmill and we'll see if it's worth using the sawmill mod in the game without anything else to go with it. Now, I've been told that using the slow B pack is actually, it really does make it worthwhile. But what we don't know yet is, is it worthwhile using the sawmill without using anything else to go with it? So that's what we're going to find out. Uh, the sawmill is nearly full. We've got 3,600 on there at the moment. Um, I don't actually remember what it is to be completely full. I think it's 4,000. I'm pretty sure it's 4,000. Yeah, when we, when we picked the pallet up, I'm pretty certain it was. It said 4,000 on it. Um, on the on the forks. <coughs> Excuse me a minute. Right. Yeah. Sorry about that. My throat is still not great, so I'm getting um, occasional coughing fits and. Uh, quite a my I've had this ongoing cold for absolutely ages and it's, it's starting to get really really annoying because it is impacting my ability to record properly um yeah so we got four thousand on there if we go to the prices and we go through we've got a load of wheat that we want to sell gomez ridge acres at 789 at the moment we want to really it'd be ideal if we could take advantage of that fairly soon um however i'm not sure if we're going to be able to so we'll have to actually no you it, it's not very often you actually see a green price on wheat or barley is it so really we should be taking advantage of that as soon as we possibly can well we'll have to wait right wood chips 288 and that's per thousand liters so 288 times four for four thousand liters um let's work it out as we go along oh hang on before we go any further let's just oh i know what we can do we can test this one to see what it does with the pallets so we've got hd bales at the moment uh pallets big bales bigger pallets now i think it's bigger pallets so if we go that one and we go work position so it should start loading yes it is that's perfect okay so that is the bigger pallet we know that now for certain um let me stop loading and i'll unload it there onto the truck and i will strap it down like that there we go and we can take this up to the sawmill so 288 times the 4,000 liters um well that would mean 250 times four is a thousand dollars plus 88 uh 38 rather um 38 times 4 is 120 um 152 so that makes 1152 dollars we should get 1152 dollars for this single pallet if it's going at the exact rate of the um the wood chips now how much wood chips we got out of it i think we had when we'd finish, if I remember correctly, I looked at the numbers before I picked the pallet up. I believe there was 3,600 litres of wood chips on there. So that would be very almost the same again. Let's, let's just call it another 1,000 for 3,600. Um, it's, it's close enough. So we're looking at 2,000, about 2,150 roughly for one pallet of wood. And I'm not sure how much in the way of trees we use to do that. Um, whether it's actually worth doing uh, just selling the tree direct but we'll see what we get for it it might actually translate as more than the 4,000 liters when we sell it so we, we'll see this is this is going to be quite interesting for figuring this one out um combine up the top is full so i ought really to go and empty that one because i really want to keep that moving so that we can get that field bailed up um because I'm hoping next week to be able to start planting poplars up there. Even if we don't actually get round to planting our other fields with more grains because we're concentrating on other things, I would at least like to get poplars done up in that field because we do have to do that harvest. There's one thing I did say that I would do, and I've never actually planted poplars or done any harvesting. I deliberately didn't do it in the time lapse series this time round because we were planning to do it on here and I wanted to have a look at it in depth on this one first um, because I do find myself quite frequently doing the same thing on this series or Sosnovka as I'm doing in a time lapse and I think it kind of gets a bit repetitive if I do it like that so that's that's why I've kind of um, changed the way uh, well I didn't do the poplars anyway 
Right, the only issue I've got when you come in around here like this is you've got this light here. It's always right in the way. And it's, this is really the, the only way. If you've got a big truck coming in, so we'll chuck that one out of the way, um, you've got to swing out wide and come around like this in order to be able to get here properly. I'm hoping that I've got to actually put it onto the floor. Good job it didn't try to sell because we, we wanted to make sure what we're getting here. Um, oh, it is selling. Oops. I didn't actually mean to do that. Um, let me take the straps off a minute so it doesn't completely crash in a minute. And that will go through 1,154. It's exactly what I said, isn't it? I said 52, so it may have gone up a fraction. But, yeah, so you get wood chip value for the timber, um, which is actually more than just straight wood value from the trees. I do know that much because people have done... Um, research on this and have let me know all about it so I do know that that is worth more um, but yeah so we've got we want to get the slow bee packs going now so that we can um, make better use of this lumber that we're getting from the sawmill mod we also want to get the poplars planted up on field one so I need to finish doing that but right now we're going to take this trailer back and we can start gathering up those bales um, I don't think we need to keep any. We got loads of hay and straw and stuff like that and silage and everything down at the cattle yard. The only thing that we're short on at the moment is a bit of hay for the sheep. We're going to have to go down there, grab a few bales and bring them up for the sheep so that we can feed them. Um, but that's just that's a minor detail. That's sort of a quick side trip to do at some point. I'm not quite sure when, but they haven't run out yet, so I'm not going to worry about it today. Um... What I'm going to do is once I... Actually, I will finish... I'll get this one back to the field. And then I'll nip up the top and empty out that combine again. So that that one can keep going. And then we'll come back down here and we'll gather up a trailer load of bales. And take them straight into our sell point we got just in the big red barn. And sell them in there. It's eerily quiet around here. Mainly because we have filled the pallet up. And if we look here, 7199, so 7200 7, litres of wood chips from two pallets. So that's 3600 for one. Um, which I would guess would end up giving us a total of around $2,000, maybe 2100 per pallet of lumber that we create. Um, that's... I'm, I'm not sure how that compares with how much timber is going in. I'm not quite sure how much timber is going in. But I don't think there's a huge amount of timber that goes in, in order to get all of this coming out. Um, just go in easy and pick that one up. Where are we? We need to just go over slightly. There we go. Put that one in like that. Pick it up. And perfect. There we go. Right. So there's our pallet there. I did suggest putting um, some conveyor belts from those wood chips there around to the other side. And a few people said they thought that would be a really good idea. However, I am personally reconsidering that now because of the... Um, space issue that we've got here. I don't think we've got enough room to be able to do that properly. So I'm going to avoid doing that. I'm just going to drop this one here. We are going to need to get a log fork for this tractor so we can get some of those logs that we've cut and bring them over to the sawmill. But for now, we'll leave that pallet there and we will just stop the tractor. The sawmill has started back up again, so that one's working nicely. Um, we're going to need to put... We're going to need to do some moving of stuff soon, I think. Um, yeah, we won't worry about that just now. Let me go up to the tray, uh, to the Tatra. Right, in the interest of expediency, I am going to do this quickly. We're going to go to here, we're going to go square bale. It is, it's just square bales, that's all we want. There we go, I will press X so that we are in loading position, so it will start automatically loading up the bales. Um, we've only got one trailer, which, th that'll be okay. I don't think we need to go and get a second trailer for this. Why is it doing that? That was weird. Did you see that like the green straps come back? It was like it had it was like it thought that I was going along and like going to select a strap or something. I've never seen it do that before. That is an absolute first. Whether it's a, a slight bug with the scripting on the trailer or if it's a I've I've not having not seen it before and used this trailer a lot in this in all three series. I suspect that there's some bug introduced by another mod that has caused a minor tiny conflict that done that. Um, I can't think of anything else that would have caused it. So let's just go whizzing down through here. And 
Yes, I know that this isn't overly realistic, belting around the map like this in order to do our loading up. However, I think that we can excuse it because we've done plenty of bale gathering before and we've got other things we want to do. In particular, I really want to have a look at that um, slow bee thing. I've also got to get greenhouses. I completely forgot about them. We've got to get greenhouses. We said we were going to get them. I said I was going to get four. So I need $100,000 worth of greenhouses somewhere on this map. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put them. And I don't know where I'm going to get them from. Right, let me just finish loading this. Right, excuse me a minute. Okay, right. Yeah, you know when your, your throat goes like really, really super dry and um, like to the point where it's almost hurting because you've got to cough so badly? That's the kind of stage I'm at with my cold right now and it keeps doing it. Very, very frustrating because obviously when you're trying to talk, um, if, you're, if you're having a normal conversation with someone, you, you can say, excuse me a second, and you can cough. That's fine. But I can't really do that on here because if I start coughing, it's going to... Um, sound really really loud on your microphone or on through my microphone and it would quite possibly do some serious damage to your speakers so um yeah i'm having to keep stopping every so often to um have my little coughing fit and then come back again which i i do apologize for and i'm hoping that i do get over this fairly soon now we've been going for more than a week let me just unload onto the trailer there we go it sinks down nice i love the way that it does that so it suddenly becomes entities in the game and we'll strap it all on excellent there we go so now we can move up here We'd have to make sure we take the straps off before we go into the barn. Um, I'm going to back up from this wise angle, I think, today. I normally do it in, at the other end, but... Um, so I'm going to go from this way, just to do a bit of variation. And lately I've been on the time lapse, I've just been driving straight through the barn. But I think we'll do it backwards. I particularly like doing round bales like this. You, you get down here and you take the straps off of the round bales and then you back up. However, the moment, um, yes, I do enjoy doing that, but I don't think it is worth the pain and the hassle of having to make the round bales in order to do this. So when we can get a decent round baler, one like the Crone Ultima, um, I really want one of those balers again. That was such an awesome baler. Um, I am aware that someone did convert it over to FS17. I don't know if it works very well. However, I refuse to use it because it wasn't the original modder and um, I've heard there are some issues. So when the original modder does the Crone Ultima, uh, converts it over, or I, you know, I read quite clearly that the um, permissions have all been given, then we will see about using a Crone Ultima. Um, but at the moment, I don't really want to because of the fact that it's, it's kind of hijacked work and I don't like using hijacked work. It just... It feels wrong. Having spoken to quite a few different modders in various different parts of the farming simulator community, I'm starting to really get a feel for just how much work goes into creating an original mod. Um, and there's a lot, it's a lot more than you would think. Um, it's not just sort of quickly knocking together a model. When you're creating a model from scratch with some of the software that's available, it's a very, very drawn out, long and involved process. So I am not going to cheapen those efforts, especially when we get these things for free. I am not going to cheapen those efforts in any way by trying to, um, by supporting someone who steals other people's work. I don't like that at all. And it's, it's not something that I approve of. Incidentally, I'm not going to mention any names because obviously it's going to be a fake profile. Um, I had someone contact me recently and say, could I please... Um, do some uh, support their modding site that they've got um, feature a load of videos uh, with mods from their site include links and everything so generate some extra traffic um, they would be willing to pay me so I went and had a look and lo and behold it's one of the pirate sites I the first four mods that I seen on the site uh, one of them was by TSM um, it's one of the auto load trailers uh, something on my shoe too his American Outback map was on this uh, website um, and there were a couple of others as well that I know are released on the mod hub and I also know that these mods have not been released anywhere else um, so and I know that these particular modders have said in forums that they absolutely do not give permission for their mods to be uploaded onto any other website because they want it all done through mod hub because that's where they can release official up, uh, updates and stuff like that and so it keeps uh, the user experience better. So this person is got the nerve to come and ask me to promote their 
pirating website. Um, so I said, yes, I'm quite happy to promote your pirate website. I would do 10 videos featuring exclusively mods from his website and tell everybody to go there, but it would cost him $1.5 million. Um, well, actually, I said £1.5 million, which is actually closer to $2 million um, than £1.5. Um, he thought that that was a little unreasonable asking for so much money. So when I explained my reasons, you know, he's a, he's a pirate website and he's stealing uh, other people's work and trying to claim it as his own, um, I heard no more from him, which I really can't understand why. I thought that was quite reasonable. I don't, I don't know about you guys. Do you think that is reasonable, me requesting two million dollars or 1.5 million pounds in order to promote the, um, the, the theft of modders' work? Um, I would, I would have promoted it. I would have also said that, um, yes, I'm providing links to this website, but I should also let you know that this is all stolen work. It is not the originals. I will also provide the original links, encourage you not to go here, and any mods that I feature, I would try to contact the original modders and pay them some of my um, 1.5 million pounds. He didn't get back to me after that, and I really can't understand it. I thought that was a very reasonable offer. I don't know what you guys think. Do you think that was a reasonable offer? Do you think I was um, unnecessarily rude? Possibly I was unnecessarily rude. Um, it's something I take very seriously, the theft of other people's work. And even though um, giants explicitly state that you're not allowed to charge for um, mods or anything like that, I still felt that it was... Um, I don't know. It's, it's still theft of intellectual property as far as I'm concerned. It's not... Um, is someone else trying to profit from the intellectual property that is not theirs and that I really don't like. I, I really, really don't like it. So um, I really do try my hardest. Why, um, when I played FS15, I used a lot of mods from external sites. There weren't that many mods available on Mod Hub. Um, not like there are now. And so I did, I used a lot of external mods. Now I limit the external mods I use quite considerably compared to how I used to. Um, purely because we have ModHub, and ModHub is fantastic. People put a mod on there and they can run updates to it, and they can let everybody know what's going on with it. Um, and it's a way to make sure that you've got the most up-to-date stuff going on there. There's also a huge variety of mods going on there now. It's, it's used far more in this iteration of the game than it was in any previous ones. And I'm, I really do love the fact that we're able to do that. Which is why I try to keep my stuff on ModHub, because it's just so much easier. Um, however, I do have my select sites that I go to, FSUK, uh, ModHoster to a certain extent. You've got to be a little bit careful with stuff from ModHoster. And then there's the, um, the sites for the, um, the team's own sort of download sites and stuff. So you've got like um, ARM, the ARM team which do the small baler, and uh, I think there's American Eagles Modding is one of them. Black Sheep Modding, they've got their own website. Um, and there are a few others as well. So, yeah, I, I, that's the ones that I use. And there we go. That is all of our bales. So that was my experience with someone trying to get me to promote a pirate website. And I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, I probably was a little abrupt with him. Um, and, yeah, I would like to know your opinions on whether you think that I was right in being abrupt with him. Or do you think I should have um, been... A little kinder and tried to educate him however I do feel that if he'd already got to the point where he'd stolen all the mods and built the website and everything he wasn't going to be interested in a lesson in a lesson in morality so it was yeah I, I, I felt that I was justified in doing what I did our sawmill is working away quite nicely we've just about run out of time now I need to get up to the top and get that combine running again um, I've got to think about what we're doing next well, really, we want to start working on a slow bee pack. We've got these fields cleared, so th this is all done now. We've got our money off of these fields. We want to get the top fields done. I'm not going to plant anything else in these fields just yet, I don't think. I might do. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have a think about that. Um, however, the slow bee pack, we want to have a look in placeables, and we want to come through here. What are we... Where are we? I'm still trying to... No, 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 no. There we go, right. Yes, the LS Mod Company. It is the LS Mod Company that do those, and they use the pallets from the sawmill. I don't think it's LS Mod Company that have made the sawmill, but it's LS Mod Company that 
have made a whole load of different things to go with it. It's not just this B-Pack. They've got other things as well. So they're certainly worth looking at. And I don't know where their original website is. I will try to find it for you um, and put a link in or at least we, we, maybe we'll look at some of the other stuff. Um, how do you feel about me using the last six weeks of this series to just kind of look at placeables and um, like factory kind of stuff as well as doing our... Um, doing our poplars and poplar harvest and sort of not really doing very much with um, other crops. We'll keep our animals going as well, but kind of just look at the placeable side of it uh, for the last six weeks. That's this. I'd like to know your opinions on that one. Now, we want 45,000 for this one. This is the slow shriner. The carpenter produces beehives, get production started, deliver woodboard pallets, or take little wood directly to the source. So, if we go for this one, uh, it doesn't want to be placed here anywhere why can't I put it here oh I can put it there oh I know why it's because you've got the area in front of the workshop it doesn't like that I can put it not on the road there we can go all the way along and hmm. right so there's a couple of little places I can put it there if we were to use this field over here this is what I want to know is, is it going to float it or is it going to be a um, like submerged concrete platform? I think if we put this one right here, we could sort of just use this field now rather than planting it up again. And let me rotate this round. Press shift. It speeds everything up quite nicely. Um, we've got right. There's a, a pallet point there by the look of it right in front of the door. Um, is where we put stuff. Maybe if I try not to put it onto a steep slope, if I, if I put it up here, I've got a better chance of getting up onto it, potentially. Hmm. I still, I, I really want to put it down here. How can I rotate this round? If I go... Alright, there's something on the side there. I want to put, actually, I'm, I'm going to try putting it here. And... Oh, I know what we'll do. Just in case. And let me go here, and I'll just click save game, so that we've saved it. There we go. And if it's wrong, I'll just reload the old save. Let me go there, and get that one again. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if that one goes there, actually it might be better, because I think we can get into it from the top side rather than lower side. So let's put that one there. There we go. We've placed it. Come out, come out, and run over here and take a look. So we've got our first bit. Let's take a look up here, and so we've got to put something in there, and we've got to put something in there, and then we've got to come over here, and this, I'm guessing this is like the output for it. Can we go in? We can go in! Oh, brilliant! So you can go in here, we've got uh, sawmill stuff, you've got lumber boards here, and there's a decent looking saw bench actually, with a proper guard on it. Um, I say proper guard because uh, one of the ones that I've used on a really fairly regular basis this bit's all broken off, so all you've got is just a, a naked saw blade. You've got to be really careful using that one. It's not something you let the um, inexperienced people have a go at. This here is not a... That's a metalwork lathe. That... I'm pretty sure that is a metalworking lathe. That's... That... Yeah, it is. All of these bits here, that that's a, that's a metal lathe, not a woodworking lathe. This bit, the stock, the tail stock there, that does look like a... Um, woodworking lathe and so does the headstock and um controls and that but this bit here this looks very much like something that you would see on a metal working lathe rather than a wood one because a woodwork lathe these bits would sort of be out this side so you can rest your tools on it um i didn't even know i'm so sorry sir i didn't even realize you were in here i'm i'm here doing a tour of your workshop and i didn't even realize you were here my bad i'm not really it's, it's, it's my fault nice looking hammer there can't, can't pick it up. That is the roof of a hive. He's got the um, the wood around the outside and then a piece. So he's putting uh, roofing felt over the top of that so that will keep it weatherproof. Quite nice. Although I wouldn't personally use roofing felt on a beehive. I don't think they like the um, the tar paper. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's up to him. This is, this is his lookout, not mine. Um, delivery of wood pallets would go here, I'm guessing. And this would be the beehives there. We can see the bees. So let's just bring this up now. So we got wood, liter zero products, beehive um, info, wood empty. Let's come down here. What's this bit for? Oh, wood chips. Wood chips. You put wood chips in there, don't you? Um, I don't know what that's for. I'm guessing that this is a model that's taken from the greenhouse and they haven't removed it, that bit. But I could be wrong. Okay, let's... Uh, 
I've I've completely run out of time. I've gone way over time, but I'm sure that you guys all want to see this as much as I do. I want to dump that pallet on there and just see what it does. So let's just go and get this pallet and we'll put it in front of it and we'll see how we work. Um, I'm going to leave the help screen up for a minute. Let's come on round. There we go. And we're going to do a lot more to this in our next episode. We're going to start looking at these um, the bee pallets and everything. I can't pick that up very well. We just bring it over like that. Oop, easy. I'll put it down on the ground here flat. So my question for this week is, do you want me to, when I've got some spare cash... Yeah, see, that's not working very well. Let's try and pick that up flat. When i got some spare cash, do you want me to spend it on sheep? Do you want me to spend it on cows? Or do you want me to spend it on both um, evenly and get um, one sheep for every cow that we buy? Uh, it's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know what you'd want and why. And, of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. Um, we will just put this pallet up on here just so that we can see what happens briefly. And then we are going to... Right, loading zone. So I'm hoping that we can just put it here anywhere that we... Oh. Ah. That was deliciously easy. Very, very simple. Right, so we, we don't actually have to worry about that. And it does 33%. So we can put three full pallets on here um so we got the wood three full pallets go into there and i'm assuming that we can also come up here and we can tip some wood chips in here we will try that next time um or at least that's what we'll go we'll, we'll get the um the fence over there and we'll try and bring that one over and tip in a few pallets and see what that does so this is saying four thousand um i guessing the game needs to tick if it doesn't tick by the time i finish saying goodbye we'll just move it forward just to see the first little bit move over there so if you've enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give me a like and if you really enjoyed it please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and let me just speed up time there's 15 times as 30 there we go oh the guys actually come look, did, look are, are you watching this are you seeing what is happening he's bringing it in he's put it on there oh this is fantastic this is brilliant! And he's picking it up there. He's bringing it over onto the next bench. Oh, ho, 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 yes! Oh, this is amazing! And it's going to that. He's, put it, he's putting bits into the box. Length of timber there. Oh, this is fantastic. Right, he's going to pick that one up. He's bringing it over. Oh, he's got, he's got, he's working on it on here. Next one going on there. Oh! Do you see what do you, do you see what I'm seeing here? And well, see, he's going to go and get the um, the the sack trucks there, and he's going to bring that up. That one's got the um, the different frames. It's got the the beehive frames inside it. That's that's just an empty beehive bit, and that's the super. That is that's the super on the beehive. Oop oop! I'm in the way. I'm right in the way here. And there's the lid. He's got another. He's got a small super there. Uh, that's a full beehive. We come out here one just says one so what does one do uh four percent that's one right okay yeah he made the super so he's made, he's building the supers there uh, inside it's got the frames with the the flat pressed wax ready for the bees to draw out this is brilliant right okay i, re I really gotta go we will be looking at this a lot more in our next episode so until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.